Okay, so here we'll look at what a soil test tells you. So you get the results back, it's a bunch of numbers. What's the point of taking it? If you listen really closely though, uh, while some people may have to listen and think it's only whispering to you, others can look at a soil test and hear a megaphone. So keep in mind that soil test can give you a lot of good information. I'm gonna go through some of that here. So first off, we're looking at what's it screened for? Well, this is looking at a general soil test and looking at typical nutrients, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, also something into iron, manganese, copper, zinc, aluminum, and boron. Uh, and soil pH is also a great um, item to get, and it can be um, screened for typically total lead, which is more uh, addressing the potential for soil contaminants. And also some, for some uh, appropriate for mineral soils. So we're looking at mainly field-based soils here. But these are some very common uh, standard nutrient tests that most labs will test for. What the report tells you is an estimation of plant available nutrients, and this is an important concept. It is not the total amount of the element in the soil. It's estimating the plant available nutrients. The idea is the nutrient numbers provide an idea of what the roots have access to. And this comes back to this chart here, where we can see how pH can vastly impact the availability of nutrients. And the soil test attempts to estimate uh, within a close degree of tolerance of what that plant can pull out of the soil. So just for example, if we're looking at potassium, and we get a very acidic pH, pH below 5, you can see the availability is much reduced. Again, that could mean that there's a lot of potassium in the soil, but it's not very plant available, so it will test low on your nutrient analysis for your soil report. Um, other test screen for, for example, organic matter, this can be added to a lot of standard nutrient tests. And determined what's called by a loss ignition test. This means the sample is dried, then the lab will weigh it, they'll literally burn it, and then they'll reweigh it. The concept here is that the organic matter is burned off, leaving only mineral ash left. The amount that's lost is the organic content, and that's expressed as a percentage. So it just gives you a little background on how organic matter is typically, um, the procedure is typically done for that number you see on the soil test. Most growers will want high organic matter. And it really depends on what your native or starting level is. And in many garden soils, 6 to 9% is a typical um, range, uh, but I've seen 20% or greater. And this tends to lead to excessive nutrients, increased disease pressure, high water holding capacity, uh, and this can cause an issue. So more is not always better for organic matter. If you're at the 6 to 9 range and you've modified that, that's probably plenty good right there. Uh, I've even seen lower organic matter percentages performing at a high level. Overall in the country, the soil organic matter, the higher ranges are the darker colors. We can see overall soils tend to be a little bit higher organic matter in this region and a little bit lower organic matter in the southwest region. So it just kind of gives you that kind of perspective. But just in general in the country where higher uh, native or natural soil organic matter uh, is present. What this shows is a percent change uh, of percent acres in, of organic matter. So a 30-year percent change in soil organic uh, carbon in particular. So carbon is kind of one of the key measures of organic matters. So 30-year change uh, compared to soil organic carbon one year. Typically what we see in the reds is where we're seeing a loss, and the greens is where we're seeing a gain. Okay, not everywhere has uh, data or cropland that reported. But we can see there are areas that are depleting organic matter um, at what can be can sometimes considered a uh, alarming rate, especially when we're looking at depending more and more on smaller land parcels for agriculturally produced crops. Something else a soil report may give you or may have the option to include is something called soluble salts. This value typically only comes back elevated if salts have been added to the area, and salts can be include chemical fertilizer, compost, or even areas where snowmelt may be applied in winter months. It's a good idea to test at the beginning with uh, proper management. Future testing, this test may not be necessary. I mean, you don't always need to include this with every test, but when you're starting with an area, it's a good one to include on the testing list. Nitrogen's a little bit of a weird one. These uh, values are only as good as your sample, meaning it's a volatile uh, nutrient. It's constantly changing. In order to get results that are field representative, certain steps should be taken during the sampling process to ensure accuracy, which is analyzed by the lab. Typically, this is performed during the month of June, especially for corn growers. It's called a June nitrate test. Because this nitrogen is always changing, if you test early in the season when soils are cold, you'll get an artificially low value. So this PSMT, or pre rate nitrate test, taken in June, you want to take a full one-foot core. And here's corn, for example. 
and going right through and sampling here and here, right along the row in kind of a zigzag form, and taking those six to nine samples or so. You want to be attentive when taking soil samples, and this is uh, true for any type of sample. Uh, we can kind of see in this image here, this, this is a large cornfield, and it kind of shows what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across. We can see the coloration in the foreground here, nice and green, and the coloration here by the homestead, also green. But if you look kind of in this area in the middle, you'll see it's a little bit lighter yellow here. So this might be an area you want to sample differently or separately. This could be caused potentially because of low nutrients, could be caused, um, or it could be a water or a drainage issue here, could be a soil profile issue, um, could be all, um, all the above. So we want to sample this differently so we can see if the problem is in the nutrients of this particular section of this field. Lastly, there's something called particle size. This is an expensive test and it's often not cost justifiable for most growing conditions. It's basically an assessment of the particle size of your soil. This test is of greater importance for golf courses, especially putting greens, looking to maintain those nice even conditions. So for most growers, I can't really recommend the added cost uh, because we really can't modify for that. But just to give you some background that it is possible to get the particle size evaluation of your soil.